Hello everyone, this is John welcoming you to another brilliant, fun, incredible oil painting. Um, I'm in a good mood today. Today is Sunday, what the heck? I don't even remember the date. All I know is it's Sunday in January and it's still cold outside, but tomorrow's supposed to be nicer out. I think tomorrow's the 22nd, so today's the 21st. And uh, I lose track of time. I got a full-time job and I still lose track of time. So, I'm getting all gun ho because it's going to be in the mid to upper 30s all week next week. A lot of rain, but still, I can deal with that. So, now let's go to what we're doing. Got a nice 16 by 20 stretch canvas here. And this is a Blick special canvas. Okay? Nice back staple. It's got the areas. I'll see if I can show you here where you can put the little keys in there. Um, to stretch it even more. Another trick is you can take a spritzer bottle and kind of spritz the back and it'll tighten up uh, cotton canvas. Um, I've got my Windsor and Newton Griffin Elkid. I don't know if you can read that or not. There we go. That, that thing's better. Griffin Elkid oil paints. Like I said before, they're genuine oil paints. They're artist quality. They're very inexpensive. And because I am not a patient oil painter, uh, they dry pretty quick. Um, with the amount of impasto I do, the thickness, anywhere from 24 to 36 hours and it's touch dry, four to six weeks I can do a final um, airtight varnish and I won't have any issues with it. So today we are going to do our normal. We're going to take some of our medium, which is our walnut alkyd medium. Now usually I do sap green and paints gray. For some reason today I just feel like sap green and French ultramarine blue. And I'm a little, I don't know, I'm in a good mood today. Let's see what we can come up with. I like the way this is looking right away. I like, if you've been watching and following my videos, you've been seeing them doing this a lot more than uh, any other way. I don't really sketch anything out anymore. Um, that doesn't mean I won't. I do some custom work, so obviously that I have to sketch out really well. But I just, I don't know, it's kind of fun just throwing color on and, oh, wait a minute, see, see, okay, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I'm going to bring this down. There's going to be a big waterfall right there. Okay. See, this is what I mean. I really enjoy creating like this, and I want to thank you, oh, God, please give us the names right, Dennis Sheehan and Stuart Davies. I don't do what they do, but I started with this from watching them as far as the kind of putting color down and I don't want to say haphazard, but maybe you know just throwing it down in a haphazard way um, to kind of find the shapes, find the painting, that type of thing. And I really enjoy it because I'm just doing this as I'm talking to you and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't had a waterfall up this high and that was perfect. I can deal with that. Okay. Enough of the ranting. Although I do like it at times. So, here's my water. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way back, but I'm definitely going to go and make a lot of water here. Okay. Putting in a little bit more blue if you can tell. It doesn't really matter what you do. At this stage of the game, you know, you're still, you got a good idea of what you're doing here, okay? Now this could probably be rocks all over the mountain. I might not even have sky over here. It might just be a mountain. It might be just like this. And then I'm going to have, you know, some trees over here. Water is going to come, obviously, like this. It might come down here a little bit over. I'm not sure yet. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, you want to get excited about oil painting. The way you get excited about it is you see something just happen before your eyes. We've only been doing this a few minutes and we already got, we already have a painting. That composition that's going to be really nice. So, we're going to go like this. Not sure about this yet. It looks kind of yuck at the moment because it is, but that won't stay that way. And then we'll just go over here. Put some trees in here. Then 
gonna go here, like I said, I'm just gonna keep it right off. This will all be rock. And I might have the stream coming right from off the canvas here. That's what I'm thinking. My dry rag here. So right now what I'm kind of thinking is, okay, there's my forest, and there's my mountain. I'm gonna make this brown, paints gray, whatever. Here's my waterfall. Here's the stream that's feeding it. Ooh. Get those. I'm not actually throwing it on the floor when I do that. I have a garbage bag right here. If I did that, my wife would kill me. Okay, so here's our thing. This most of this is gonna be land. Water is definitely gonna come through here. I'm not sure exactly how. So why don't we do a little bit of that right now? Let's get our water not in for sure, but let's get a real good idea of what we're doing with water. Right now, I still have the same dirty brush. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that sound. It's Rafael Sanzio, Quaker Parrot with the big mouth. He usually doesn't talk to me much, but he knows when I'm doing a video and he likes to interrupt me because he'd like to be a brat. My wife thinks he's an angel, but she's biased. He's just a little brat. Okay. I know I'm going to have it there. I think I'm going to have it keep coming. I'm not going to have everything done with the water right now. I do want to get a real indication of where I'm going. Okay, so the waterfall's there. It's a relatively decent sized waterfall. And that means that it's going to be rough water all the way through here. As always, one of the few rules that I do follow you gotta have the water flat. It's gotta be horizontal. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. Okay, so right now, I'm gonna switch up. Same dirty brush. I uh, haven't cleaned this thing at all yet. I'm gonna put some land in. Because right now, I like, don't have good bearings of what I want. I think now I do. A lot of times you got to put in more than one feature that you want to keep just to get an idea where you're going. And this is just Payne's Gray and Van Dyke Brown. Some of my normal colors. I've got a few more colors than normal today for some reason. Not quite sure why. Usually I have four to five. I got six today. Still not a ton, but. I usually don't go that many. This here. The sky shouldn't be much of a challenge today. When you first start painting, you're going to see a lot of those bristles end up on your painting. Don't worry about it. You can just take little tweezers and pull them off. As you start to really get into painting, you do a lot of paintings, you're going to see them like I am as you go and um, pluck them off right before they get on your painting. I don't always do it, but most of the time I get a good, uh, most of the time I can see it sticking out. And really, depending on where they end up, like if they end up like in a bunch of foliage or something, it actually just adds to the texture. It's not even a big deal if you miss one and it dries in it. It's really not that big a deal. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit more medium on my palette here. And going straight blue with the same dirty brush. Now I'm gonna hit this with white when I finish the water later. And that'll help get a little bit more water color in there. And um, it'll look better. Actually, this isn't looking bad at all. I kind of like this color. I'm going to bring this all the way down, but I probably 
and then have some kind of vegetation coming up from there. I haven't decided yet. One of the beauties about adopting this painting style is it seems difficult because you don't have a plan. I have a slight plan, okay? For me, and again, if you followed any of my videos, you'll know I'm big into water, fresh water. That's like my thing. So it's going to have fresh water somewhere. See if I can stand back here and see what this puppy looks like. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Yeah, what I think I'm gonna do though, I think I'm gonna extend the land. <coughs> Excuse me. deal with that much better okay actually I'm not even gonna wipe the brush it's the same color I use for the mountain so I might as well just hit the mountain let's go right up to the top not gonna be a small mountain not gonna be a huge mountain it's gonna be one of those in-between jobs I think I'm gonna put some over there have maybe little foothills go across the whole thing. And then I'll put trees in front too. cliffs that are going to hold this water in. I'm just going to have a little stream that's a feeder stream. Could be a river for all I know. Never been here before, so I couldn't tell you. Okay, now I'm leaving this gap here because I'm actually going to put uh, some more land in there. And I'm going to use my raw sienna with um, some of what I got in my brush. Oops. Now, you see how much of the painting we've got done, and I've yet to wash my brush. I've wiped it off a couple of times, haven't washed it. And I want to emphasize this with oil painters. One of the things that keeps people from oil painting is they think it's too complicated and hazardous and everything else. Um, once upon a time ago, not that long ago it was. It's not the case anymore. Um, you can simplify it too. Anybody can do that. But they have all kinds of stuff. Like my studio is in my house. It's a 10 by 20 room off the kitchen. And I have a little bird, like I told you, and I have a wife and myself. Um, I don't have toxic oil paints or mediums or brush cleaners. Everything I have is green and no petroleum products. Now you can also do the same thing with water mixable oil paints, which for some reason I don't like. I just, I don't, do well with those for some reason I'm not sure why um, so I looked and do it and I use you know pigments that are non cadmiums okay no cobalts nothing like that you know so none of those um, harsh minerals or anything like that and I have a very clean very green studio now, the other thing is, I don't wash my brush and stuff constantly, so forget about the complicated part. I am a landscape artist, so I use the colors that I got. I don't worry about, I don't want to get the 
a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. I don't want it. That was too close to the water. I want this up a little bit more. I'm trying to make different levels. So I've got here, and I want to go up a little bit. I may have to wipe some off, but I might not have to. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, there we go. I don't have to. That's good. But the thing of it is, you can do oil paintings without a lot of baloney. And a lot of baloney is what I never liked about oil painting. And then when I found out you didn't need all the baloney, then uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. I mean, I dabble in acrylics here and there, and I do watercolors here and there, and soft pastels, oil pastels. I've done, you know, a whole bunch of stuff and had fun with it. But there's nothing like oil painting. It's by far my favorite. I love the way the pigments look. I just, I love everything about it. So, um, when I found a way to make my studio clean, I, I just did it. I mean, it's like, okay. So now, not only do I get to enjoy oil painting, but now I eliminated all those hazards, all those excuses. And you can do the same thing. You know, the paint that I use, okay, the Griffin Elkid paint, I'm not affiliated with them at all. Actually, none of the um, supplies I use, I'm affiliated with anybody. I pay the same prices anybody would, okay? And they're very inexpensive. Uh, 37 ml tube, which is the normal size tubes, okay? You know, most of them are $6.81. I think the permanent alizarin crimson I use and the permanent sap green are like nine something per tube. The 200 ml of titanium white is like $26, and that's it. I mean, for oil paints, and artist grade especially, that's, that's some good stuff. That's some real good stuff. Okay, now this fan brush that I was using, I am going to clean. And the only reason is, I'm not going to be putting in bulk areas with this usually. And I'm going to want a couple of different colors. And I'm going to show you something really ugly. But to me, it's actually kind of cool. Same brush we've been using most of today. Let me see, get it up here. There we go. I'll clean that later. And I may clean it during it, depending on what I'm doing. I doubt it for what I've got down here. But, um, who knows, I may. Now, we got the palette knife. There we go. And this is what I'm gonna use for our highlights. I'm gonna put the highlights on before I finish the trees. No, I'm not. No, I am not. I'm going to take a, what is this, one inch brush, and I'm going to put it in my sky. If I don't put it in my sky now, I'm going to be fighting the highlights. And when you fight the highlights, it's just a lot of extra work. So, why fight it? I'm going to show you how I'm doing these trees, too. I'm going to go right over most of this sky with the trees once I get those in. But until then, I'm gonna go right through it. And I'll show you what I mean. First thing I wanna do is just kinda of get these mountains cut in, getting a little as contamination as possible into the sky. You know, a little bit, I don't care because I still have some sky colors in the mountain themselves. That's one of the beauties of using the colors the way I do, is I don't really have to worry about what gets in the sky to a degree. You know, you still got to be careful a little bit. But if you get a little bit in, not that big a deal. See how I got some dirty in there? And now it'll just blend right into the blue. So you got a little bit of a dirty sky. Okay, I've seen that all over the place. Hell, I live in the western suburbs of Chicago. I've seen polluted skies that were really ugly, unfortunately. That's the hard part. The easy part is coming up. So we're just going to go in. Okay. 
Now, a lot of this is going to be covered with thick paint that I'm going to make with the trees. So you're not even going to see anything like you do now. But what I'm doing, I just want to get the sky in. There's some people, actually there's quite a few, that put in the vegetation, trees, whatever, and then they put little dabs of sky hole in. I never really got into that. A lot of people are real good at it. I am not among them. So I prefer doing my trees like this. Put a line in, get a real good idea where I'm at. Now I'm going to wipe it off, not clean it off yet, but I still have my same color on. I'm just going to blend. Make sure I get the tops up here. There we go. Dog's on it. My monitor turned off. Hopefully I'm still recording. Hey, I'm still recording. Cool. I've got a new setup with my iMac computer. I've always used to do the um, iPhone by itself and then do an airdrop over to the uh, computer and then edit it and um, put it on YouTube. And I had a nice webcam, external webcam, and I tried putting it on it, but that got to be a pain in the neck about where it was stored. And I'm not a big time Mac user yet. I've been using PC most of my life, so I'm still getting to be new. And then I saw how you can use your iPhone as a webcam, and that's what I'm doing right now. So I've got the iPhone used as a webcam, and it looks really good, at least when I'm looking at the monitor while I'm painting. So I'll see how it is for editing and putting it online. Okay, now, see, I love this. I didn't get rid of the trees. You see exactly where they're gonna be. And I'm gonna have a few back here too, I think. So, I'm gonna take the same brush, not cleaning it, Okay, got blue in it. Okay, blue is a distant color. I'm gonna take some green. It's gonna mix with the blue. Mm, excuse me. Okay. Put some in the back. I'm not gonna put them all the way up. See, this is why I didn't put the highlights in on the uh, mountains and hills yet. Because I knew there was a good idea that I was gonna have this. Now, I'm gonna keep this the way it is. But, as you'll see, what I'm gonna do is these are gonna be obviously background trees. So, I don't want these, I'm not gonna have a lot of branches, I'm not gonna have a lot of everything. But I'm gonna make it so you definitely see them, okay? And then what I wanna do Actually, I'm going to leave that alone. Actually, no, I'm not going to leave it alone. What I'm going to do is, I'm, this I have fresh color on, then I'm going to leave the old color and just blend it in more. Okay, now, I'm not going to put branches on there, I'm not going to put anything on there. The whole idea is that's going to be background trees. So, in a minute, I'm going to get to putting on the highlights to little foothills in front, big hills, all that other stuff. Then I'm going to take a bigger brush, either a one and a half or a two, and then I'm gonna put my pines in front of it. I'm not gonna block everything here, okay? I, wanted, I want you to be able to see a lot of that, and that's what's gonna give it depth, because this doesn't have a lot of detail, and it doesn't have a lot of color. It's got a lot of blue in it. Blue is a receding color. So I'm gonna have a lot deeper, richer color that's gonna go right in front of it and right in front of these hills. And that is gonna help with our depth.
a little bit. Okay, got to be able to have some kind of a pilot on there. A lot of times I'll use a fan brush to do these, but lately I've been really enjoying using a knife. And they really come up with some nice stuff. Now this one I'm going to bring straight down and I'll show you. They're kind of cool the way they look. You just bring it right to the edge, right to the top edge. Right at the stretcher bar, so you gotta be careful. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna have that with some um, foliage anyway. Okay. I'm gonna have some foliage coming up here a little bit, and I'm gonna have foliage coming up there a little bit and around. There we go. Okay. It's coming along really good. And I'm going to have to restock up on paper towels here. So if you give me about 15 seconds, I like to get, you know, four or five out at a time. I think I'll do one more because I still got quite a ways to go on this painting. Okay, so at this point in time, we've got our little foothills done, got the mountain done, everything's cool. We've got our background trees, okay? So we know where we're at, where we're going, the whole nine yards. So the only thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a fan brush, this one here, and I'm going to touch up a couple of areas. Touch up means a little bit of stuff in here that I don't want. See, I'm very lightly blending it to where it's turning green. That is working out well. Okay, I'm not even gonna clean that or wipe it off or nothing. The next thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our big old ugly dirty brush. And I'm just gonna go straight into sap green. A little bit of paint's great. Now I'm gonna tap on, but very I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use a lot of pressure to tap on. I've got a lot of paint on the brush, but I'm gonna go with let's say medium to softer pressure. I just want to just lay the paint on, take it off, lay it on, take the brush off like that. I'll show you. And I don't want to cover up everything I got here. I want to keep a lot of this done. So. Okay, see how I just did that? You can, you can barely hear. Now, if you'll notice, I'm putting it in areas where they don't have a lot of the other stuff. Okay, again, I don't want to cover everything. A lot of really good stuff here. Bring these all the way up. You want to see everything on your painting. You want to see the background. Now I'm just kind of randomly hitting it so stuff comes out. Stuff meaning tree stuff, branches stuff, twig stuff. And then I'm going to highlight just certain parts of it with yellow. And then that's really going to make it shine. Couple here where I have the gaps 
They're not going to go as high. They're just going to be little babies. Little babies. That will leave a long time. Uh, one more. There you go. Okay, now, this is the part that I love. One of the many parts I love. Oh, and I haven't said it yet, so I'm going to say it again. Um, I want to be known for this. I want you to, whenever you hear this, I want you to know, hey, John said that. If you're not having fun oil painting, you're doing it wrong. I don't know if anybody is still watching this video. At the moment, the moment it is 31 minutes in, so I may be talking to myself, which is fine. I have no idea how to handle the um, YouTube algorithm, so I have no idea how to keep uh, people's retention span good, but I do my best. Okay, so one of the things I was getting at before I got into my little rant about, I have no idea about the YouTube algorithm, see all the background trees that are still visible and you see this nice little back foothill visible now I'm also going to put some of these up here possibly and I'll show you what I mean I may just do the little flick move and put some up here so I still see more of this I haven't decided yet but what I am going to do is this foreground right here so how I'm going to do that I'm glad you asked lemon yellow and sap green. It scares me when the monitor goes blank because I don't know if I'm still recording. I have been a little bit of grass. Now if you notice, I haven't finished the water. It's hard not to notice, right? The reason I didn't I knew it would be coming right down to it with uh, the grasses and stuff from here. And it's going to go into the water, which is fine. I have no problem with that. You know, if you go to any forest reserve, any lakes, whatever, you know, a lot of the stuff goes into it. Greenery, you know, rocks, all kinds of stuff. But what I wanted to do was get that done first. So when I put the white highlights and watermarks of the water itself, it's going to go right through here. It's going to blend with it a little bit. It's going to show a little bit of it in the water, so it'll look a lot more natural. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do, I'll take a lot of yellow. green. There we go. Two yellows just got out of the John. Okay. Now, got that done. Little straight paints gray. break up that green and yellow just a little bit. There we go. Boy, that's looking nice. That's looking nice. Okay, so I still haven't decided what I'm doing, but I have to make a decision, so I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I haven't decided what I'm going to do, so I'm making a decision anyway. Ah, oh, thank God I don't know where my high school English teacher is because she would kill me to hear me talk like that. I'm going to do similar to what I did there. This is so dark here. If I went too dark, you wouldn't even see it. And then you got the yellow going into the um, Payne's Gray there, and you got a nice little green showing up. And then I'll put a couple of these like this.
Sav Green and fill in here. The thing about painting the way I do it now, as opposed to the way I used to do it, which was a major league struggle, is I know it looks a little haphazard the way I'm doing it, but there is a little bit of method to the madness. And the biggest, I guess the biggest method I would say, is I finally learned to let go and stop putting my own two cents in. I throw color down and I allow the painting to appear. I allow it to paint itself however the hell you want to say it, okay? Um, I've talked about for years the inner artist, which is that part inside of you that actually creates the art, okay? Anybody can paint, but not everybody can create art. And I finally figured out from my own experiences, anybody can paint, you can learn the techniques, you can learn how to handle a brush, you can learn how to do whatever. Where the art comes from is allowing your inner artist, that part inside your soul, to take over. Your conscious brain, to a degree, has no idea what the hell's going on. Okay, I'm telling you right now. When you paint enough and the inner artist starts to blossom inside of you, let him go. Or her. Okay? Let it, you don't want him to go. Every time I fought it, it was garbage when it turned out. When I didn't fight it and just let it go, oh my goodness, I was thrilled. I mean, it got to the point now where I'm actually looking for the inner artist to come out. So I'm doing this, and I'm doing this, and I'm throwing color. That's how I got this waterfall here. That's where this composition came from. You saw it. I had no preconceived notion other than I was going to have fresh water somewhere. And then it just appeared. And that's where you get to with practice and figuring out who you are and everything else. So, enough of that tangent. Now, I am going to take my one inch brush and I'm actually going to wash it. And the reason I'm going to wash it is because we're going to start with the, um, the waterfall. I gotta make, I got to make, oh my goodness, my English is so terrible today. Please forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads of all ages. Yes, that was Bozo the Clown from when I was a kid, so you know how old I am. As a matter of fact, in a couple weeks, three weeks, I'll be 58 years old. I cannot believe I made it this long, especially with some of the dumbass stuff I did when I was young. Whew. My goodness. When I was in my 20s, there were times I was sure I wouldn't make 30s. Now that I'm 58, I'm like, okay. Let's see how far we can keep this thing going. Found a really, really awesome woman that helped settle me down. Actually, she got me into painting, too. She's never let me live that down. And um, we don't have kids, but for my temperament, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it's been interesting. It's been fun overall. Okay, gotta go darker. Gotta have dark to see light. So, Payne's Gray and French Ultramarine. I'm gonna make this puppy dark. And then when I put the white on it for the cascading water, it's gonna show up nice. Might as well do this now. Within reason for your water, the darker the better. Because you're gonna you figure you're putting a white highlights on anyways to show water. And what better way to show the water than with a real dark base? And then the light on top. And I'm just going to leave this like this. Okay, see now that looks really good already. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about the rest of it because it'll fall into place. I am washing the brush one more time because I want pure white for the water.
waterfall. This part is a lot easier than the waterfall, and it's only because of, I don't want to say precision, but you got a smaller area to work with. And I'm probably going to have some trees or little things go up over it, so you're not going to see this whole thing. I'm going to have something that's going to look like it's actually holding it in. This part here, I'm not, this part here I'm not really done with, next to the waterfall. Obviously, I haven't highlighted the trees yet. Okay, so now you want to take pure titanium white, decent amount. Okay, and I'm going to do the waterfall, the down bottom first. I just want to go straight as you can. One more. There we go. And then just tap in. And you know that puppy's going to splash. It's not going to be splashing out here enough. Now this is just a sloppy coat. This will not last. So if it looks terrible, leave it alone. Don't worry about it. I just want to get an idea where I'm going. I'm going to scrape some of this off, actually. Real, to real toothpick. Listen to me. Oh my goodness, I am speaking like a five-year-old today. The cold is getting to me more than I thought. Okay. So I'm going to get the top done. Don't want it too thick here now. There we go. Okay, this is the tricky part. You want it as realistic as possible. There we go. There, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. I'm going to use that brush all over again, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to wash it off, but I'm going to scrape some of this off. That's just way too thick. Now that we're pale and nice. There we go. See how easy that is? Okay. Can you excuse me for about 10 seconds? Got to get some water. Now, let's go in with more blue, Payne's gray. Darken up what I lightened up. I went too much. There we go. Actually, I'm going to use a bigger brush take me forever doing it this way. I don't know why, for some reason, I really want this water dark before I put the light on. I have no idea why, but I'm going for it. Just leaving it alone. I had a lot more Payne's Gray in my water than normal. And again, it's like the inner artist I keep talking about. I can't tell you to listen to your inner artist if I'm ignoring mine. That would make me a hypocrite and that would be bad. Yeah, this is much darker than normal, so I'm not sure what the hell I'm doing. Okay, um, I'm actually going to wash this brush. Folks, if you got an idea what I'm doing, leave it in a comment, because right now I'm running on what the hell is going on. Okay. What do you think, Raster? Any idea what Daddy's doing with this one? The water's got me uh, a little puzzled here. 
Okay. What I am going to do is take a brand new one and a half inch brush. I was using the two. Okay, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put See how that looks standing in the back. Okay, better than I thought it was going to. Still not good. So I'm going to shape it. Using the side of the fan brush. No idea what that was. Something on the computer. Now, what I'm doing here is basically getting it to the color that I want. So I keep adding Payne's gray, blue, and white in different quantities until I get that water kind of what I'm looking for. It's going to obviously be rougher at the top than it is at the bottom because that's where the waterfall is. Let's see here. So I've got some swells in here. I've got all kinds of stuff I wasn't planning on. down. Small palette knife. It's funny, the smallest area is the one I'm struggling with the most. Okay, much better. There we go. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with that. Okay, so. The only thing we got to do is put highlights in some of these. Not a lot. I'm not going to go crazy with it. So right now I'm going to work on this a little bit. So now I'm going to take... Sap green, Payne's gray. I'm going to bring up where my flowers are going to be. So, yes, we're going to be covering a decent amount of our water. And the reason why, in most places I've ever been, even the forest reserves around here, some kind of stuff coming up into the water, over the water from the shoreline, whatever you want to call it. And this stuff is usually wildflowers and cattails and all kinds of different things. And they're beautiful. Okay, now 
that. That is a nice little hair that I didn't catch. I am going to take this right off the side. fall on me because this puppy is still way 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 too wet to fall uh, like I told you before the thickness that I use this will be touch dry 24 hours 36 at the latest but 24 is probably general rule of thumb and um, four to six weeks to varnish life is good okay so I'm going to put some yellow up there. I'm going to do my highlights now on my trees. I want to get this section done. I'm just going to touch lightly. And then I'll come back with a fan brush and blend it in so you don't see that stark yellow. It'll blend into the green that we're looking for. Those I'm leaving alone. I'm not going to highlight every one of them. I want some that are looking like they're a little further back. and then others that are, you know, right there. And those little ones I'll leave alone. Okay, so the next thing you do with that, okay, that thick yellow isn't pretty, but it's only there to just apply the paint color. Now I'm going to take my brush, my fan brush, and even though it's dirty as all get out, doesn't matter, it's got blue in it, again. Blue and yellow, where is that? Green. I'm just going to lightly tap. What I'm doing is I'm just blending the yellow into the dark to give me my green. But it's going to be a lot brighter because there's so much of it, like right here, it's real thick. I think actually on my palette I got sloppy and a little red got in there, who lives in crimson. That looks good. Put a little dark green right in there. Break that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, that part looks good. That part looks real good, actually. Okay. So, the next thing I'm going to do, I'll wash this. I'm going to use my palette knife and I'm going to make a few little rocks right up here to hold that water in. Because right now there's nothing holding that water in. So, actually, I'm going to use the smaller palette knife. A little bit more control. I'm going to use this little bit of what do we got here? Um, Van Dyke Brown and um, Payne's Gray. I'm just touching and bringing straight down. See how that just puts that water now to where you can still see the water but it looks like it's got something holding it in do a little bit of highlight but I don't want to use a white highlight with the white water you'll never see it so that's where the raw sienna comes Now, take my fan brush and I'll take it straight down. I'll take yellow.
There we go. Hey, that looks so much better. Okay. I'm going to try these next. If you are enjoying this, if anybody is still here, <laughs> uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, I love to hear your comments. Anybody that you know has likes it, hates it, whatever. I, 58 years old, shortly I don't really care. Um, if you love me or hate me, doesn't matter anymore. So I welcome all comments. It's, it's a lot of fun actually. Let me know what you think, and um, let me know if there's something you want to see. You know, let me know whatever it is you want me to do for you, and I'll do as best I can. Sorry about that delay here. I had to find something. Okay, this is a beautiful brush that I love. It's an old, if we can see this, it's an old Hobby Lobby brush. Solvent proof chip, made in China, whatever the heck it is. I think it's like two bucks each at Hobby Lobby. It's really nothing special. But the bristles are so, let me see if I can find something to compare it to. Okay, so here's a real nice new brush. And you can see how the bristles are pretty decent. Over here, they're splayed. The front, they're all over the place, different lengths. I know it's hard to see in the video, but these are awesome foliage brushes, and I'll show you why. You just dip straight into color. In this case, blizzard and crimson. Medium pressure. You don't want to do it too hard, but you don't want to do it too soft. Okay. And you can see, and you will in a minute, when I put the yellow on it. I'm not going to, wipe, uh, I wiped my brush off to get the thick off, but I still, as you see, have a ton of Elizabeth and Crimson still on there. Went straight into my yellow. What does yellow and uh, red give you? Beautiful orange. Now, you tap into it a little lighter than what you did to put on the red. I don't want orange everywhere. I want a little yellow. I want a little red. I want a little everything showing up. So the pressure is very important also need more yellow. I have to squirt out on my palette here. One of the things you're going to find when you do landscapes, you go through a ton of yellow. I mean, granted, white, when you use acrylics and um, oils, you go through a ton of, but I use a lot of yellow, because yellow is a great color to mix with anything. See how this painting is starting to come to life with these bright colors? Okay. Now, I'm not going to put any more into there like that, but what I am going to do is wipe, uh, clean this now. And the reason I'm cleaning it is I want to start all over again with the red, then the yellow, or in this case, Alizarum Crimson, then the yellow, in the back. Now, one of my things that I mention a lot, wherever you introduce a color, make sure you have it in another place to give your painting a little cohesion, color harmony, that type of thing. So it needs a little bit right here. Okay, it needs a little bit over here. And there is no rhyme or reason, this is just your artist license. Okay? Your artistic license. This canvas is yours, you do whatever the heck you want with it. And what I wanted to do, I love wildflowers. 
whenever my wife and I go on trips and stuff, whenever I see wildflowers, if I could, I'd stop at every one of them to uh, check them out. Wildflowers are gorgeous. And now we're just going to lightly tap in a little bit of the yellow to bring out the orange. See how nice the color harmony is? It's not just in one place. You have it all over the, the painting. So it looks so much nicer. Okay, now we're actually coming up to the end. So anybody that's still with me, thank you much. If you had to go and use the restroom or get something to drink, uh, you will not hear me uh, complain about it. I'm grateful for the time you have given me. Okay, now I'm going to use a lot of yellow and my big brush. And I'm going to put in my grass. And this isn't all that there is to the grass. We're gonna do a couple of things here with it. But this is giving you a nice, this is the base coat, and this is the color additive. <laughs> color additive, I like that. If you ever hear that, I coined that phrase, okay? My phrase. There we go. And, Got to put in some ground here. Okay, now. There we go. Oh, that's looking pretty nice. Okay, so I really wish I knew what the heck that was. Okay, so now I'm going to take yellow on my fan brush. There we go. Want that up there. Want this up here. Just taking different areas, lifting up grasses. Now I'm going to take a little Van Dyke Brown. And a little Payne's Gray. Just kind of the dark spots here and there. I don't know what these dark spots are, to be quite honest with you. I just know they look good in a landscape. And we are going to highlight them. You knew that, though. Let's wipe my brush off here first. Actually, I think I'll wipe it. It'll uh, clean it. I will use a little knifey.
Okay, my friends, I think we have a painting. I want to thank everybody who stuck around, who came in at the end, who came in at any time to uh, watch my painting. This is, like I said, a 16 by 20 oil painting. It's a stretch cotton canvas, and this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it, and like I said, if you did, consider subscribing, and if you do subscribe, hit that like button. I'm usually pretty good with uh, once a week. So I hope everybody has a great work week and be safe.